Let's talk about competitions. It may seem like an obvious subject considering uh, the arena we all live in, you know, classical music, jazz and whatnot, but in jazz and classical and other disciplines, there are competitions and they have proliferated at a rate that no one expected them to. The reason for this, of course, is because these communities have money and a lot of angels and sponsors, they want to, you know, beat the IRS or beat the, their tax system or Geneva or wherever they live. And they want to give the money out to deserving places. So there are a lot of people, there are a lot of people with a lot of money. Hence, Monte Carlo, Geneva, Fort Worth, New York, all these different competitions in these different cities, Hamamatsu and where is it, Tokyo, all of these different competitions have a lot of money at stake, but don't be fooled by them. Number one, they're in it to brand the competition name, the Clyburn, the Naumburg, the Leeds, the Queen Elizabeth, of course, there's nothing wrong with branding the name of Queen Elizabeth, naming the competition, because if you win, you get that brand hooked onto your brand. You know, so-and-so won the Clyburn, so-and-so won the Queen Elizabeth. Yes, the brand of the, of the competition is very important, but don't forget, they're branding a new winner or a new competition winner every four years, every two years. Hence, the real entity that gets the branding is the competition. The competition itself gets the branding. There are so many winners of so many competitions now that you almost have a competition on every street corner and you have a competition winner every half corner. <laughs> uh, so the problem, of course, is the artist. Where's the branding? So he won the Clyburn, so he won the Leventritt, so he won the Tchaikovsky. I mean, no one can even remember who won the last Tchaikovsky unless you stay with it. You gotta stay with it, stay with the program. If you're a competition voyeur or you audit competitions, you're gonna know the winners. If you're not one of those two categories, if you don't travel to competitions, you have a you know, big load of money that you can just go audit competitions, you're not going to know who the winners are. It's just that simple. You will not know the winners unless you actively pursue knowing the winners. Who does that? Not really very many people, and that's the problem. The buyers don't know the winners. They don't know the names. So again, the lesson here is the competition gets branded most likely. Now, how do you distinguish yourself mightily in a world of competition winners and a world of competitions. Do the difficult. Do the unique. Shock them. Uh, there are a lot of examples of this, okay? Some people, you know, uh, I'm not going to mention names, there was a violinist who used to have some unusual hairdos, okay? Different colors. Um, there have been pianists and whatnot who have worn strange clothing. Uh, there have been artists who play unusual pieces or versions of unusual pieces, transcriptions and whatnot. In of themselves, it's been there, done that kind of thing. But sometimes, listen carefully, these things stick. Okay, when it sticks, that's when you can get results. The problem is, how do you make it stick? Like I said in previous uh, episodes of this um, vlog or book or whatever you want to call it, money. That's what creates and keeps the hysteria going. The initial, sorry, I'll correct that. The initial act or stunt, transcription of, let's say, also Sprock Zarathustra, there actually is one by Tausig. It's not very good, but if someone was to pull that off successfully, it might get some attention for a few months, maybe a year. If you're lucky two years, then it's over. It is over, unless you have a bag of money. Now, we'll go into that later, but that's basically what we're talking about here. Competitions, do the unique, do the difficult, 
and you have a chance at branding.